Good afternoon, everyone. We're down to the, the real final stretch for this afternoon. Um, just uh, one last uh, reminder. Uh, so uh, at the end of the, the conference, uh, the hotel has uh, arranged for an extra number of taxis to be uh, ready and waiting for all of those of you that need to uh, disappear off to the airport uh, and fly off after the conference is complete. Now, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Sergi. Uh, he'll be talking about uh, the hacking team and Gamma International in business to government malware. Over to you, Sergio. Well, hello. My name is Sergio Gilavanov, and I'm trying to set up my timer to be right on time. Just give me a second. Okay. So, my name is Sergio Gilavanov. I'm the malware expert at the Kaspersky Lab. So, my job title means that I'm researcher, developer, inventor, and right now I'm public speaker. So, you know that there are several stories about the government malware, for example, in Germany, in China, but I, I'm going to talk about particularly about the two cases connected with the hacking team and the GAM International. I think that uh, some of you already know the cases which I'm going to talk about, but just to just quickly remind you and to make you feel how, how it's bad to fight with this kind of malware, I want to show you just one video. You have new challenges today. Sensitive data is transmitted over encrypted channels. Often the information you want is not transmitted at all. Your target may be outside your monitoring domain. Is passive monitoring enough? You need more. You want to look through your target's eyes. You have to hack your target. You have to hit many different platforms. You have to overcome encryption and capture relevant data. Being stealth and untraceable. Deployed all over your country. Exactly what we do. Remote control system Galileo. The hacking suite for governmental interception. Rely on us. So this is, gives you just an example of what we are going to talk about. And for personal me, the story started with some letter that we received 24 of July the last year that was sent to a lot of uh, security companies that contains the jar file with the Mac malware inside it. So right now we know that this case was connected with the Moroccan case where the journalist from Morocco was attacked by this malware and of course it was a lot of buzz because in the media because he's a journalist and it's a really bad idea to attack the journalist. Uh, so here's the case and when I talk about the political and you know social questions about the lawful interception we, we I, I cannot mention his name. His name is uh, Mr. Morgan uh, he works for the Citizen Lab, and he's working in the Google as a security researcher. So he got, you know, skills, he got knowledge, and you know, he got the source of information. So a lot of people are trusting him and are sending him the images of the laptops, the samples, and he can, you know, directly access to the victims who can share with them the information. Well, I not have the sources, so I started to analyze this malware as we are regularly doing with the, you know, with the Zeus, the Stuxnet, and all this other stuff. So I started to analyze it like a classic malware. So the first of all, I needed the proofs that this sample, this binary, was really developed by the hacking team. Well, you know, no, but no law enforcement will give me the computer for the forensic analysis of the developer of hacking team, so I need some evidence. So the evidence was like, so the first one was obvious, in all materials of the hacking team they're using the RSS uh, like, uh, letters to describe the functionality. Then we got the same functionality and the same letters in the binaries. Then it was uh, the exploit, which is, which is available on the virus topple that downloads a payload from the 
hiking team subdomain. And the last one that's uh, in the, some version of the Trojan, the path where the source codes was located was in the name for the username Guida. And suddenly Guida is the name of the senior developer at the hacking team. So, well, you know, I don't have the, you know, proofs for the course that this malware was developed by the hacking team, but as a researcher, this information is really enough for me. So, what can it do? So, uh, we started to analyze uh, the functions of the samples. And we, we need, you know, information from the public sources. And on Wikileaks, there are some documents uh, about the functions and how the hacking team is propagating malware and how it's describing. And the same functions were located in the binary. So, screenshotting, record audio, making the video from the victim's computer, and so on. But, the, you know, the, uh, actually, there were several other interesting things that wasn't described. For, First of all, it was a, there was a self-replication mechanism. So, uh, for example, in Russia, if the judge gives the law enforcement, uh, you know, right to spy for someone, judge will never, never, never allow the law enforcement to, for example, monitor all the, you know, random people and the friends of the of the suspect. But the malware, you know, allows law enforcement to, you know, replicate and infect the, any computer with this flash drive. Then it's got the infection of virtual machines. It can work with the mobile platforms. Then it's got the ability to self-update and installation drivers. And usually the samples are signed by, by you know, authorities. So, uh, the, the, the fourth and the fifth, you know, layer is really, really important because the worst scenario of using the law enforcement uh, tool is the case when the law enforcement, the officer, for example, in some country, it's possibility, can install the malware inside of the machine, then update this malware with additional code, and this additional code will download some forbidden content from the internet, like a child porn, on the computer, and then this code will be, you know, self-deleted. After that, the law enforcement can knock at the door and say, it like, you are guilty. And the guy will have no, 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 nothing to do with that. Because there will be no evidence that the malware was existing on his computer. So, the other way is the, how it's propagating. We got the several documents and this describe the physical access. Then we have the remote methods for installation. Social, uh, social engineering, the self-updated like, like uh, self-signing jars, like in the Moroccan case. Then we learned that there were lots of, for example, attachments with the file name flashupdate.exe. And then we started to see the exploits. Well, uh, I was, you know, searching in our antivirus collection for the samples that was actually used to install the malware. And, you know, for example, the, the idea was that, for example, this sample was detected in June and the vulnerability was disclosed in September. So I can just compare this date and I see that, for example, Vupin was like the most actually publisher of the exploits. And the last one was discovered by me, so I was very lucky. I passed this zero day to Adobe. Unfortunately, Adobe right now have more interesting stuff <laughs> to deal with. But anyway, the, the zero day was discovered, and uh, this zero day was, you know, mentioned in another big case. It was, was the case when this exploit and this malware was founded in the U.S., but the CNC server was located in other country. And you know that this is a really big problem for the, you know, international cooperation between law enforcement because it's not allowed, for example, the uh, FBI to, to monitor citizens in Russia. At the same time, for the FSB, you know, they got no power in the U.S. So, the, you know, the malware is cross-bordered, and here's the, an example of how this malware can act via the borders. And so the, the name of the slide is FSB spy or is it the hacking team malware? Well, I don't know guys who decided to call this malware FSB because the FSB, you know, got no connection with the hacking team. And we had a lot of fight between the researchers who was analyzing the samples to, to prove that the FSB spy is the, just a code reuse of RCS malware. So if we talk about the countries, let's like see the map. So 
well, uh, we didn't make the special, you know, detection for the hacking team malware because we got a lot of automation system that are detecting a lot of malware and this automatic system really do not care about the source of the malware. So I just collect the old verdicts and place it on the map. And on the map we see that Mexico is the most infected country by this malware. And please remember this country, I will describe it, uh, the cases in future. Uh, but if you need, you know, the more accurate di data, not from the Kaspersky lab, you, maybe you should use this data. The fingerprint. So the citizen lab, Morgan, have discovered the C2 fingerprint for searching the servers of the FinFisher. So I've done the same. So here is the request. So this is like a specific name, so the files, and you will ask some web server uh, about this this location of these files, then the answer of the CNC server will be like this. So, error, RCRs, collector error, and here's the, you know, offset in the binary where it was generated error. In fact, this is where I'm stopping my researching. Because, you know, Mr. Ross, and yesterday on the semantic presentation, how there was in holding really good jobs in holding the zero access, it's huge success. But, you know, I don't want to sink all these botnets. Because, you know, if I'll try to do this, then I will, you know, immediately get charges for the block and the judgment. And she is that like technical information that could be publicly available, but not for the steps. And, well, of course, I'm continuing my research and trying to find another zero days that is be used for the uh, exploration of the abilities to install this kind of malware. But, you know, no active research right now about the hacking team. The other story. This is a story about the FinFisher. Well, this is much more sophisticated malware than the hacking team. And for example, if you know some techniques that can be used to, you know, to block the researcher to avoid the detection, then this technique is available in the FinFisher malware. It's a bootkit. It's, it's virtualized. It's obfuscated. Several layers of encryption. So, I, it took me about the one month to, you see, you know, to, to look at the exactly clean binary. And, and it, it asked my colleagues to help me with that because it's too much job to do. But, but at the end, we will, you know, clean the, we'll clean all the stuff and see the code. So what is it about? Well, the first of all, the method of propagation. So uh, there were a lot of documents about the FinFisher on the Wikileaks, and they're describing the physical access and physical way of installation of this malware. But at the same time, we've dis discovered the social engineering t techniques for, ins for installation. And one, one, and one was really, you know, funny, because I saw that, uh, that malware was detected on some, you know, website, and the, name f and the file name of the malware was the flashupdate.exe. So when, of course, I go to this website and it's closed, nothing is over there, but, you know, it's really hard to hide in the internet. So domain tools, screenshot, make it screenshot of this domain when it was actively propagating the FinFisher. And, you know, this is domain, so I see the content of this site, and this is a phishing site of the news media uh, in some country, let's say, so the guys who was installing this software was used as social techniques. And yes, no exports at all. I couldn't find any zero day, not zero day. Everything is clean. So maybe you will find it. Then I will you know, shake your hand. <laughs> but I had bad luck. OK, functions. Uh, the uh, list of the functions are completely, you know, almost the same as the hacking team. There are also forensic job. But, you know, the most interesting part was the list of the applications that can be used to, you know, get the passwords, get the emails, and so on. And maybe some of you don't know, but if in some malware you've got the Opera browser, you've got the bad email client, client uh, SQ Messenger, and to speak, then that means that only one country, let's say an ex USSR country, this four software got really popular. That's why when we received this map, you know, we wasn't surprised. But I'm from Moscow, from Russia, and I was surprised. 
because, for example, the first presentation and release really said that in Russia we got the big system called SORM for monitoring all activity on the internet and the telephones and so on. And you know, there's really no need to install the kind of tools. So we had the three main theories. First of all, some police department bought this tool. Second theory, this is the correct versions of this tool. Because we and we the FinFisher and we hiking team, we got you know some samples that looks like correct. And the third theory that some other government are spying on the Russian citizen. So we started to look into the truth, and the truth was, you know, completely different. All this detection, what we see in this map, are from robots. You know, this cyber underground Russian underground are providing, you know, several services to other cyber criminals like affiliate networks for checking detections. It's like various total actually, but for the underground using. So and all these victims, which is located in Russia, running the virtual machines only, they are using trial versions of uh, AVs, and they detected several ten thousand malware a day. So this is a robot. But let's back to the Mexico. The story there was that the U.S. authorities was catching the narco boss in the sea. They took the boat where was a several, the several kilograms of narcotics by using the spyware. And this, you know, it brings us the good news because if Mr. Morgan is telling that a lot of cases connected with the fight against the human rights activists, pro-democratic activists, but this case, you know, is like make a balance between the good ways of using the malware and the bad ways. And actually, you know, this is really ridiculous, in fact, because the malware saves life. So that's it. So how can I deal with this? Okay, so once again, what you can do, and what answer I was looking when I was, was looking when I was looking in the code, the worst scenario with the hacking team, you know, ability to execute the, any code, I was trying to, to find this function in the Fin Fisher. And I didn't found it. So the protocol for, uh, you know, make conversation with the C2 server is using the upcodes. And it is really hard, you know, to, you know, when you got the binary code, it's really hard to analyze it. But I've done everything that I can. But I didn't find these upcodes and the early possibility to execute the code. But the FinFisher developers got a, you know, challenge. They've got the malware for for all available web platforms, popular, Windows, Mac, and Android. And we have the malware from the Fisher for the Android. And you know that the Android malware is much more easier for researching. And inside of this jar file, APK files, there was a class that was fully described, fully described the all functions and app codes that malware can, you know, say to the C2 server and what C2 server can answer. And inside of this config file, inside of this malware, there were the opcodes for executable files, for making the remote shell commands, allow to execute anything you want. So that means that malware, FinFisher, can execute the anything. But we don't have a sample. So right now the theory is that somewhere exists the premium version of the FinFisher that can do anything, but we got no samples. Well, summary. It's sophisticated malware, malware. And how I learned that, well, if it took several months, it's a sophisticated malware. Trying to avoid detections. Working with the drivers, several ways of, you know, bypass the HIPS policies by several methods of injection the code in the several processes. They use the really hard, obfuscated techniques and so on. 
they've got the three ways of installations. There we see the several hundred infection via our cloud solutions and what we should do. Well, Mr. Andrew Lee in his first presentation was asking us the questions. So, you know, I, I didn't have the right answers, but you know, I cannot recommend you anything because, but I think it could be nice if the law enforcement will not use the remote methods of installation this malware. Only by physical access. No exploits, no social tricks, no access through the ASPs. Just a physical access. And during this physical access, the law enforcement can, you know, use the DRM technologies, so the malware couldn't be, you know, copied to another computer. And then while the physical access, please remove the AV. That's it. You know, I'm really, you know, I cannot explain customers why their software didn't help him to deal with malware. Because, we, you know, it's software. You know, you cannot, work, you cannot work without the hardware. So that's it. And then, you know, I, I understand that for law enforcement, it's really, you know, hard trick because they need, you know, be making, they can, you know, do know the location of the suspects. So maybe they should build the big, big monitoring system which wouldn't read the whole content what all citizens are reading, are writing, but just, you know, click the sources that, for example, this email was sent from this IP address. And the IP address is located over here. And then by physical access, they can delete AV, install the malware, and that's it. But once again, it's my opinion only. Well, in fact, this is the end of my presentation, of my research. But, you know, it is a really nice conference. I really like the presentation, so I want to thank, thank you all, friends, the presenter, organization team, all participants. So I, can, I can't, you know, allow me to end this presentation with such, you know, you know many thoughts, negative way, what we should do, and so on. So I'd like to entertain you. and tell you my story about my feelings during this research. I was really down because this malware, you know, I have the, some ethics and brains, so my brains stopped me to do several things that we can do with the cyber criminals gains. And I was really down. And when I wrote these stories from the Morgan about how this malware was used, it was terrible, so it was a nightmare for me. I didn't sleep, smoke, drink a lot of alcohol. My wife asked me to, you know, to eat something, so it was a nightmare. But then my friend sent me some link to the British comedian. It was really funny, so I decided, you know, to deal with my feelings and to do something to back to the normal life. So I decided to write a song. <laughs> and the song is about the malware, the law enforcement, the AVs, about everything, about all my feelings. Enjoy. I'll never ever get you a name, but today they comes to release a record. So now the time has come. I think I've dealt with my feet is at last. I really want to forgive you, John. I want to accept it and leave it in pass. But don't you know it's such a big deal? And to me, I think that it's you need to because there's really good chance somebody out there will know you. So maybe they will ask this message from me. Just wanna say, John. But I still 
when you next time on your business trip You will be arrested and put in jail Yeah, I want you to go but you can't be leader Something wrong And I know that you're a smart man Because only great minds can imagine it To analyze the techniques of a massive malware That put it in the product and sell for million bucks Just wanna say it, John no, I think it must be really hard to be a wise waiter Because Davies are always looming And the pressure from your complex clients so maybe you should quit a job like better like a better like like killing yourself you crazy jerk yeah like killing yourself you crazy jerk ding 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 dong this is my job close up everybody sing along la 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 I hope you're always with the kitchen the fire John ding ding dong I read this special song Thank you. Questions? Thanks, Uja. Yeah. <laughs> who's going to follow that up? You have to do a sing-song voice for a question. Come on, who's next? <laughs> Any questions out there? One question just down here. Here comes the mic. Hello, great presentation. Just out of curiosity, f among a couple other players have made uh, uh, the proclamation that we will detect all malware, no matter from which police, even in Finnish. Do you know what the Kaspersky's official stand, stands on this? Can you please repeat the question? So what the Kaspersky thinks? So basically what we do is that we have made a claim that we will detect all malware no matter who is using it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. so, well, you know, we got the big, big automatic systems and we really, you know, the robots do not know anything about the hacking team and the song. So actually, you know, we had a you know, right, you know, orders to stop blocking it. We don't have the, maybe the unofficial way some law enforcement are coming to us during some conference and asking, you know, maybe we should allow them. It's a big case, it's a really big case, so we are saving lives, so maybe we should like, but we say, okay, so, well, good, but I cannot, you know, fight with the inf our infrastructure. So this is like, the, so this is the way how we're dealing with it. So we are working, we are doing our job, and what, what else? What do you need from us? Good answer, thanks. So with that, we wrap up uh, today's session. Uh, if you'd all like to raise your hands one more time for Sergei for his excellent presentation. Thank you.